Don't go away. On Doggy Dilemmas this week, you're going to meet Abby, the super counter-surfing Britney Spaniel, and Jesse. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. I'm Denise Mazzola. On this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, you're going to meet Abby, who's right here, and Jesse. They're both rescued Britney Spaniels, and they have a whole host of very funny but naughty behaviors. So let's meet Jody, Abby, and Jesse, and um, see what we can do for it today. Come on, Jess. <laughs> All right, that was cute. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I know. <laughs> while we're just while we're here, so yes. let's go over. So introduce the dogs. Don't worry about that anymore. Okay. So introduce here, Jesse. Introduce Jessie. the dogs. This yes. is Abby. This just is let her Abby. Go. Let her go. Don't worry about the jumping. Okay. okay. Doesn't matter. Jesse. Jesse's a little shy, so let me just go get her. Jesse's camera shy. She has um she has her bed, and so she finds comfort in that bed. Okay. But she's really she's really a great dog. Abby will jump all over. She doesn't even know that Jesse is here. Jessie is very timid and quiet. Okay, and, and how old is Jessie? Jessie is supposedly five years old. Okay. We got her through the um, the New England Brittany Rescue League, and she's from Kansas. Okay. So that's pretty much all we know about her. And you've had her for how long? We've had her since July of last year, okay, so, so about she's a little new. bit over a year. Okay, yep. so she's new. Abby, we've had for um, about six months, and she has actually gotten better. Okay. It's hard to believe. But neither of these dogs knew anything about walking on a lead. Mm -hmm. um, we had to train Jessie on how to come, yep. and she does come now. Yep. But Abby, on the other hand, she's just a typical Brittany. She's just got energy. She loves life. She loves everything that there is to see. Yep. And this is what she does. She just yep. jumps. So try to ignore her if you can okay. when she jumps. Pat okay. her when she's down. <laughs> Okay, so five years old, and I missed and the age three. and three. Yes. And where'd they come from? From Kansas. We don't know. No, the where'd you adopt them from? Through the New England Brittany Rescue. Group. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. Good. And what they do is they have they have like it's a like a, a railroad where they have the dogs go from one family to another foster family to mm -hmm. another foster family to get them up to wherever they're supposed right. to go. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so just let's just. <laughs> Let's outline the problem. <laughs> There's Let one. Let me see. What the problem might be? Yeah, you know, it's really funny. This summer, I was out in the garden. I brought in a bunch of tomatoes, and Abby loves tomatoes. I've never so seen a dog. Odd. Very yeah, odd. so what? And Very these odd. were huge tomatoes. All of a sudden, I'd hear this, and she'd be chewing this tomato. I, wow. I don't know what it is with her. Okay. And she's she was overweight when we first got her. Jesse was underweight, and so we they both tried. Good. Yeah, yeah, we've tried to good. get them to be where they're supposed to be. And you know, I have no complaints with the rescue league at all. They they um, bring the dogs to the vets. Mm -hmm. um, they get all their shots. They're all neutered. Um, these yep. are both females, so they're all um, spaded. And you know, they really are great dogs. They yep. just need love, yeah. and they need to be well, run. They need training. Right. You know, right. You've given them the love since they've got here, and she's still loving right. the counters a little too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be clear. Yeah, okay. yeah. So she's been here six months. Yes. Is that true? She's going <laughs> to get that apple. Um, what do you think, Ab? And, okay, so so what what else, what has she gotten off the counter in the past? It's probably whatever it is that she can reach. She can reach back about this far. Okay. And she never jumps up, but she's just a really strong dog in the sense that she can jump high. She can jump like eight feet right, high. Right, right. But I just want to list so that yeah, the... Yeah, bread, so. meat, potatoes, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's at her dinner off the counter. Everything, yeah, everything okay. that she can find. I mean, she's eating an apple right now. Right. And you know that by giving her the apple, you reinforce that jumping behavior. Well, this is only for the show. Oh, I do not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just we making know. sure. No, All right. No, 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 no. no Don't we, do we, you would normally do. <laughs> no, we've learned. Okay. And so nothing is left on the counter that she can yep. get. Because all I have to do is turn my back and she'll be eating it. Right. Okay. So, so she's yeah. been doing that since she walked in the door. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yep. And so the jumping is 
is a very strong behavior for her, right? Because she jumps on people, she jumps mm -hmm. on the counter, she's the one that's almost ready to jump over the fence in the backyard, right? And what people sometimes forget is that, so we talk about behaviors and, and we talk about sit and down and come and called and those are behaviors. And then, and then we tend to forget that, you know, if there is an issue of aggression, that that's a behavior, that mm -hmm. running away is a behavior and that counter surfing is also a behavior. And the more she practices, the better she gets at it. Oh, so yeah. it's also counter surfing is a very challenging behavior to get rid of. Because the trick is she has to make an association with the counters that is scary to her, mm -hmm. basically. And not that that has nothing to do with you being in the room. Right, right. Because... Um, then she'll know, oh, well, when Jody's here, it's not safe to jump on the counter, okay. so I won't. Right. But if nobody's staying in the kitchen, you know, then it's safe, mm -hmm. fair games. And she, right. we she thought, knows this totally. Right. And she's been doing it with us standing here, so she right. just thinks it's open season no matter who's around. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's just quickly talk about counter surfing while we're here. And there's a couple of things. I like to try the least amount of punishment first and then if that doesn't work we'll step it up and if we have to we'll step it up again mm -hmm. so i'm going to grab this towel mm -hmm. and is she at all sound sensitive you know i don't think much well no i, I can't tell you she's okay. she's sensitive to some things and not to others so i can't tell you sometimes she just gets focused and she doesn't hear anything okay so yeah so one thing i i want you to try to do mm -hmm. Want and another apple? No. <laughs> well, we could, but I don't know. What. Yeah. So you hang a, a towel like this, mm -hmm. and you're going to put something that the dog wants, you know, within proximity of the towel. And then I, and then pots and pans, or uh -huh. um, sometimes we do cans with rocks in it just because it's mm -hmm. noisy. Mm -hmm. So, and the theory is that she'll jump here and pull this down. That's a good and idea. All of this stuff will come down with mm -hmm. it. If it scares her enough, she momentarily will will think again. And you yeah. might have to have this set up. You know, she's she's like you this said. This is like a real fashion checking right here. <laughs> right. She's just Jody, can you put some put of your stuff away all over your counters? <laughs> we'll come in next time, and you'll just have this all the way around. That would be great. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Oh, so, poor Abby. You know, actually, so I, I do think want to work. Try. Seriously, <laughs> I, want to try. I think it would because she is timid when, when we're walking and there's Stop, a just sticker. Ignore. Just ignore. Oh, oh, sorry. Stop okay. <laughs> um, when we're walking and there's a stick or something in the ground or a noise, she really does pay yeah. attention to it. So yeah. this would probably do it to yeah. her. Would yeah. you like me to pull some pants out? Yeah. Let's okay. do it. That'd be great. Heavy. The bigger... Oh, that stop. would be a good one. Yep. And we may have okay. to pick the apple up off. Oh, and I have I'm a few a more apples. I'm a little disappointed she hasn't eaten the whole thing. All right. Okay. So, so we'll see if it's going to be worth it. You want a couple more towels? No, let's nope. just. Okay. So it can't be so. So let me just. So I'm going to put it. And if I had known, I would have used a little bit cleaner towel I'm here. I'm going to put but maybe that. Like, I don't want her to have to pull. Mm -hmm. Pull. Pull, pull, right? She's not going to have to pull. She's going to get it right off. just want a little bit. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that that's kind of big. It's heavy. Yeah. So I don't want to hurt try her. try this. That yeah. will make a lot of clinky yeah. sound. Okay. And if the apple doesn't work, I know what some other things that might work too. So, Do you want me to step away? Yeah. So let's, um, let's put whatever it is right mm -hmm. there. So I'm, gonna, I'm putting these pans like so the right mm -hmm. on the tipping point. Okay. Right on, ready to go. Okay. Do you want these? So move them off the towel. I don't. The, uh, no, off the towel. Off so I don't want her to get them. Okay. I just want her to struggle to get them a little bit. I don't know if she's gonna grab them now. They're up. Go ahead. No, it's right up here. Right up here. That's right. So just. Right up here. Well, now she thinks she's going to work with her. So we'll just stand and talk and see what... Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably jump out of my skin if, if they fall. <laughs> so if she... If and when she goes up there, mm -hmm. and if this... If we see this scare response from her, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. but you'll have to do it right. many times. Right. Like this sort of set up the booby trap as part of her yeah. um, 
daily thing. Oh, something yep. else better is going to I have out. so many different things that we can give her that she would just love. Right yeah, so maybe, maybe that's all we need to do is just put the pots on the side and she won't even go for anything from now on. Maybe does she doesn't even have to have the noise. So I'd like you to try this for a couple of weeks and, okay. and you could even do something here. Do you have a squirt bottle? I could find one. Do you have one of those? All right, so let me just talk about it for uh -huh. a minute, then we'll do that. Um, do this for a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. see if, um, if the behavior diminishes. Mm -hmm. And I also want to see if it, if it, if the behavior is less when there's not, when we don't have the setup going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and my gut instinct says, oh, she's going to get wise pretty quick to when the pots and pans are on the counter. Don't jump on the counter. Mm -hmm. So then the next, there's two other things that you can do. I, okay. And I know that you sometimes, this is where you sit to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting here eating, I don't know if she's going to take that. I just want to sit. And you have a squirt bottle, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to pretend the candle is. What mm -hmm. I like to do, because I also have a counter, is I will sit. My whole family is totally, it's hysterical when I start, like, oh, some dog's going to get it. So you've got the squirt bottle on stream. Mm -hmm. And if you can actually, like, you don't want the dog to really see it. So cover, disguise it in um, a towel. And hold it in your lap. And if you, what I heard you say is she pretty much jumps here. Right? Mm -hmm. So then when she's here, I hope you have good aim, you're going to mm -hmm. stream, you're going to spray that thing right in her face, pssst, yep. right in her face. And you say nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. Okay? So she's getting ready. She's whining. There now. she is. That's exactly what <laughs> so she does. So right now, if I just her body, <laughs> you'd spray her. Okay? Yep. And you'll know pretty quick whether she was like, oh my God, what was that? Or, oh, do that again. I really like that little over here. Okay? If she's a little over here, mm -hmm. then don't. Then <laughs> don't, don't, the spray won't work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And really, and she doesn't do it to your husband? Does no. Does he sit over here? Not, well, yeah, because the dogs sit over here, so I think it's easier for her to just jump, get okay. up and just okay. jump on me. So you and it's say not because, nothing, yeah. you, you say nothing, you disguise the bottle because you don't want her to say, oh, when the bottle's around, don't, you know, don't jump up. Mm -hmm. And you just spray her, stream her right in the face and go about eating and get ready for her to do it a second time. When and if she's like hanging out down here, then I want you to reinforce her for, for staying off the counter. Mm -hmm. So does she have a sit or a down command? Um, not really, I mean, probably down. It's usually back. We usually use a, like an uh-uh or a back just to stay down. Not, we, okay. We so haven't we'll really trained her. them like a down call or a sit call just because they they just haven't learned any of these things as it was they were okay. growing up they didn't learn how to play they didn't learn any of these, these okay. things. okay yeah so we'll before I go today we'll teach her I'll show you how to lure her into a lie down and, and develop a hand signal actually we, we have done a little bit of that to okay. tell you the truth yeah I just don't do it a lot okay but yeah so now you're gonna do it a lot okay <laughs> because it's it's one thing you know to do this and scare her which she's you're really disappointing right now Abby <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also want to, to be able to communicate to her what we want her right. to do. And what we want her to do is to lay down when you eat. So if you, if every time you sat down that thing, she came here laying down expecting food, mm -hmm. that would be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So we sort of jumped in and I didn't yeah. like, I, I want to just, I want to rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind you that, well not remind you, but I feel like I break hearts, but dogs, our dogs mm. oh, and I know. so many people anthropomorphize and they know and they're spiteful and he's mad because okay good so they don't and he, she doesn't know and each of them in their own way are looking for their best next opportunity mm -hmm. and they're looking out for their own self-interest okay so and Abby's is clearly on the counters <laughs> and Jessie's is she's clearly more mellow and she's in the bed right um, she does have some anxiety, just mm. this whining, and she's like, this whole thing has thrown her off. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know how to get the food. I, I always just put my feet up there, and now there's these things in my way. Um, you could try some uh, over-the-counter pheromones. There's a dap, and you can spray it and put it on a, like, just put on a bandana around her neck. Mm -hmm. And some dogs are just, they're like. I'm not going to get it right. There are mother hormones that are supposed to be calming. And some of my clients have used it and said, oh my gosh, it's like. So it's like an day. aromatherapy kind of thing? Yep. But it's a, oop, but it's a, it's, it's a pheromone. So it helps mm -hmm. her. Okay. So you could certainly try that. You don't need a prescription for it. 
um, the training that we do will also start to help exercise her brain because it sounds like she gets a lot of physical exercise. Mm -hmm. She needs some mental exercise right. because that will tire her out in a completely different way. Like I'm a runner, right? So I can go out and run 10 miles. That doesn't necessarily tire me out anymore. Mm -hmm. But on October 31st, when I have to balance my checkbook, I'll be exhausted. I'll be exhausted the day before just thinking about it. <laughs> okay. So that's the kind of brain exercise. Right, right. Not balancing your checkbook. That, that you need to think. That we need to 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 think about. So we were, you know, watching, no, we were also our, thinking about. Um, a dog agility. We wondered yeah. if that would be good for her because she's she is like a think she's always thinking it seems like. But Oh yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. She's always thinking about what's, you know, where what's my next best thing to do here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is just so funny that yeah. that so that may or may not work for you. Right. All right. It's a good start. So the next um, the next ante is I put out mouse traps and I put one sheet of paper towel over them. So set them just like you would. Mm -hmm. Put the apple behind it so she has to paw. Right. And the, the paper towel is there to sort of protect it and just the jiggling of the paper towel will often. And so that they don't get snapped. Yes. Yeah. When, <laughs> when you do this, I would highly encourage you to write on the paper towel, mouse trap, and then set it on the counter over mm -hmm. the mouse trap. So one, so one day when I was outside in the summer, <laughs> I heard this, oh my God! And I'm like, oh, there was a mouse trap on the counter. Sarah, honey, we're not married anymore, but he picked up the paper towel and got the mouse trap. So, so it can catch people. Right. And then I did it again. There was, I had this big, um, it's called a snappy trap, and I don't think you can get them anymore. So it's just like a mouse trap, and mm -hmm. it has this great big red hand that flaps over. So I had that next to the sink because I had a dog boarding with me that just like your dog, like mm -hmm. came up every day, put his paws right on the next on the counter. Mm -hmm. So my daughters and everybody that lives with me on a regular basis knew what was under the paper towel and I forgot to tell my daughter's boyfriend. So the poor guy comes over to the sink and he hits it and the thing flies in the air and he just about had a heart attack. So he's a yeah. little aversive to paper towels laying on my counter now because he never knows if there's a mouse trap. Yeah, that sounds so, like a great idea too. But so if this doesn't work, yeah. I would be pretty sure that the mouse trap would. Mm -hmm. And it again, just so everybody's clear, the goal is not to have them put their paw and get snapped. Right. The it's goal is that they hit the paper towel and the thing explodes in the air and scares the bejesus out right. of them. That's, right. And for our anxious friend here, <laughs> come on in here, um, that may work. So you will, you know, you're going to need a couple of those too because right. you don't want her to only associate it here. You're mm -hmm. going to need maybe 10 of them because you really want her associated <laughs> with the whole, <laughs> the whole counter all the time. No okay. Um, Boy, poor Abby. I know. But <laughs> You're not going to be able to have any. What's nice about that is you set those up and then you yeah. go off and do your thing. Right. And, and she will make that association with the counter. And you'll have to do that. You may have to do that, you know, for a period of months mm -hmm. or... If you're ready all the time, it'll go, like if you did it every day and she got snapped periodically, the behavior would go away much faster. Yeah. I, th I don't think you're going to have, or we won't have much problem at all, honestly, because she is so skittish when something like that happens. Right. It's just right. a matter of will she remember it. She so, will, yeah. yeah. But right now, counter surfing the value is up here and not counter surfing is down here mm -hmm. and we want to make that switch pretty quick. Right. So um, yeah. it can take a little bit of time, but it... It can't be dependent on your presence. Right, because usually when she does it, I'm not even here. Right. So, uh, but I know she's doing it because I come oh, up. Oh yeah. And there's bl there's dirt, dirt marks pop. all yeah. over the yeah. counter here. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what about when people come to the door and they jump on them? Right. So um, I always say you can't control your family and friends, so you need to control the dog. Right. And again, for Miss Abby here, her primary her best behavior right now is jumping mm -hmm. like she, jumping is the answer she's very to, good at it yes jumping yeah. is the answer to just about everything does she jump on doors to go out yep downstairs not okay. so much this one but our downstairs door and does it open or does she just jump on it to say just jumps on it okay i did put a bell there yep hoping that she would ring the bell when she needed to go out and mm -hmm. things like that and i've learned i've learned her behavior so i know when she's going to jump so i i counteract that by knowing and keeping her off you okay. know, from jumping. Okay. So we, I mean, we are working on all of these things. It's just learning 
other ways to do things right. than what we've been yep. doing so far. Because yep. they are getting better. It's just that we'd like to see, especially Abby not jumping on the counter. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so for the jumping, the so in order for any dog's behavior to change, your behavior has to change. Mm -hmm. Whether you're changing exactly how you're interacting with her or you're changing it in that we're gonna manage her. So one thing is when she jumps on you, you, I want, we'll try to get her up and excited in a minute, but I, I don't want you to touch her anymore mm -hmm. because all this touching is patting and pushing mm -hmm. and she probably likes to play a little bit rough anyway. So it's, it's acting as a reinforcement mm -hmm. because if usually, it's not deterring her, then it's reinforcing yeah. her. And usually like if we weren't here, mm -hmm. I would be not mean, but I would just push her like, and just keep talking. Like I would, like if we're sitting at the, at the table mm -hmm. when she comes over, I just push her off and I say down and it might take twice though. That's the thing is I know right, that you should be. Right, but then every time you sit down, she does it again. She does it again. Right. And but she's getting better. But slowly, it is slow. Let's accelerate yeah. that a right, little bit. Right. Right. So you're going to keep your hands off her, and so there's there's a couple ways to do it. Um, you could absolutely. Usually when I come in, I completely ignore a dog, but because we're trying to capture some of this behavior, you know, I was interacting a lot. Yeah. So. Um, you can ignore and keep and just keep your hands off her, but I also want you to add a little body block to that. Mm -hmm. And a body block is where you're going to step. So if she's right here, come here, Abby. Come on, wake up. Wake hey, up. Abby. What are you doing? Here. You're going to walk right into her. Mm -hmm. So walk right into her. Yep. Walk into her. So directly into her. Oh, she almost pulled that off. I know. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> she had to okay. Saying, Good girl. So it's walked straight into her. Yep. No, like no hip or knee. Okay. Just, just plow into keep her. walking. Yep. Okay. You know, if you step on her feet, that's a little bonus because that will be adversive to her. She's like, no, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Good girl. I know. So straight into her. And she's just sort of deflecting. Walking straight into her. Yep. Good. That's easy enough, too. Yep. And again, straight into her. Good girl. So I would now, since she's sitting, reinforce what we want. Mm. Oh, you are. You are. Faded, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is for you and your husband, hands off body blocker. Mm -hmm. For this counter stuff, I would do the squirt bottle. I don't do them a lot and I'm a little, you know, everybody out there in TV world, don't get crazy about it. But for this particular thing, it's a really good way to get rid of that behavior, mm -hmm. okay. Um, the, uh, the alternative is you sit there and you completely ignore her, make sure she can't get your plate or anything, just, like she doesn't exist until she's been down off the counter for at least four seconds and then I would start reinforcing mm -hmm. it. Did you see that yawn? Mm -hmm. That's stress. Okay, so let me grab some treats and um, let me go over this way. Okay. So, that's for jumping and body blocking for you guys. Okay. When you have guests come over, she should be leashed. Because right. you can't, we can't teach her the new behavior while she's doing the old behavior. Mm -hmm. And she needs to be leashed so that family and friends don't inadvertently reinforce the naughty behavior and so that you can teach her something else. Mm -hmm. Now, she is excitable and frantic, so your options are when people come over, she can be somewhere else. She can be somewhere else until that initial energy goes down, and I'm purposely playing with treats, and she knows that, because we're going to work while we talk. And impulse control. So what she's learning now is that it's going to get her nothing. She can paw, dig, scratch at my hand, whatever. It's not going to get her anything. And I just haven't had enough good stuff to, to give her something for it. Good girl. <laughs> like, oh, food around. I should be I should be a part of this. Okay, well that's too bad for you, but <laughs> so one, two, three, four. So I don't want to reinforce her. She jumps up, she gets down. There has to be four seconds of laying down, sitting, standing, whatever, mm -hmm. before I'm gonna start to give her something for that. Same thing for her. Okay. Jumping. Leisher. Yours will be over there. 
leash her and my um, suggestion is that you teach her to sit and while you're doing this process she will need lots of small so I would say that's small mm -hmm. so I'm breaking these bigger pieces up into smaller pieces treats constantly going in her mouth while people are coming in so it's a two-person operation so what I'm noticing is her jumping on me is less and it's there's less body touching like I can physically feel that difference where are you going um, and she also they also do know to sit in the presence of food right so food comes out so that is contextual learning oh food is out I sit but what we would like I would like her to know is the concept of sit which means that she will sit no matter what you're doing whether there's food out or not and when she's asked so we'll have to change that from the context to the concept okay people come over she's leashed you've got a handful of treats a pocket full of treats you've got a bait bag whatever you need and you you will literally be feeding her the whole time people come in. Okay. Because right now, people coming in is very exciting. It's, it's a high arousal time. That's when dogs tend to have fights. That's when dogs jump up on people. Um, and so we need to devalue jumping while we're increasing the value of sitting. And, and since dogs are looking out for their own best interest, this is, um, this is natural balance, but I also have some boiled chicken mm -hmm. and that chicken that you pulled out is good girl so a little self-correction like she came in the air but not on us which is always an improvement and I have liverwurst which we'll use for some come when called shortly and also some homemade liver treats which are usually very high value if she could get into that bag oh I know maybe we should put this behind the pots and pans <laughs> Do you want me to put her in here? I'll stand over here again. So when you know the reason that they're getting so excited is because they think they're going for a walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's just classically conditioned. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, Jesse. Okay. So she's on the leash. You know people are coming. You're just going to step on it. Okay. Uh, short enough that she can... Stand, sit, or lay down. Okay. But if she starts to jump, you see just what, uh, 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 she can't do anything. Jesse. The, having the leash on her also helps communicate to the people that are coming in that something is happening with the dog and they just need to stay away. Okay. So the other thing I do is once she is, <laughs> that works nicely. I like that. Because jumping is just your answer. So once, sit. When she's sitting, see how there's tension on the leash? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move my foot a little bit closer to, to take that tension off. Well, she's going to keep backing away. And then you would continually feed her. And, you know, Jessie may need, to, since Jessie doesn't jump, well. I would have her probably away mm -hmm. just so you don't end up with both dogs trying to get at the trees. That's too right. much to manage, right? right? So people are coming in, you're stepping on the leash, and you're just going to feed her continually. Hi, how are you? Feed her, feed her, feed her. Yeah, go ahead, sit down. Feed her, feed her, feed her. Until, and she may need to stay leashed for 10 or 15 minutes until she's calm mm -hmm. because that's not easy for her. She right. has worked up mm -hmm. quite, <laughs> quite a lot. Okay, good. All right, let's, I want to show you how to get her so to sit and lay down. When, sorry, I know, but we're not going anywhere. It's so exciting the thought and we and both dogs can certainly learn this mm -hmm. now when I do a lot of dog training I usually will adjust their food so that it's less right um, you can use their food if they will work for their mm -hmm. food and inside they may work for their food mm -hmm. but outside you'll have to do something different <laughs> Jesse you look like you're sort of asleep but not that's really. just the way she is that's just the way she looks yeah very cute okay so can you hold Jesse maybe mm -hmm. so Jessie. that she'll Jesse, come on. And I'll work with come Abby. Come here. Come here. Good girl. Abby. Good girl. So so when we teach sit normally if the dog didn't already have a sit, it's gonna be some sort of a hand signal like this. And we'll work on that. We're gonna we'll move after. Abby. So then I'm gonna take I have several treats in my hand. Well, have the free one. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just teach her to wait for the food. 
So as I come closer, if she moves, I'm going to pull it away until she can control herself. And I'm not going to look for, good girl. The goal is that I can get it right to her nose and you'll actually see her pull away and then you're going to give it to her. For today, I'm going to look for anything that tells me she's controlling herself. So that was pretty good, right? She stuck her nose up, but her feet didn't leave the ground. I'm not dropping them. Good girl. So the three, there was foot movement, and then the fourth, there was not. And what she's learning is, oh, if I stay there, it'll come to mm -hmm. me, okay? She's not rough taking treats, but this would be a good exercise for you to do so that she'll learn, oh, good girl. Do you see her just pull her head away a little bit? So every opportunity is a learning opportunity. Every interaction with our, yes, good girl. She, she turned a little bit sideways again. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that, you know, she's gonna keep doing that. <laughs> you kept sitting. But right? I think it's just practice and practice. That oh, yeah. That's what we've gotta do. Good girl. Yep. All right, so she's looking at my other hand, so I'll just move that out of the picture. Good girl. Okay. So we have to sort of leave that. For the down, she's going to start in the sit. You're going to have many treats in your hand. She is allowed to lick and nibble as you bring her head to between her front feet. Good girl. And then down until the rest of her body is. Now for her, I want her relaxed, which is like this. See how her hips are now? Mm -hmm. That's a relaxed down, and that's what I want her to be doing. Every time you ask her to lie down, she'll go into that relaxed position. And I'm making a statement with her by giving her four or five pieces of chicken in this position. Good girl. Okay. So I'll turn her head to her shoulder, and that relax those hips. Before I gave her the food. Good girl. Oh, we've got her hips going one way. <laughs> so this leg is popping out. I'm going to see if I can turn her this way. There you go. Her whole body has to work in the right direction. Good girl. So yes, that's clear you've done some work with that. Yeah, we have done a little bit of down, but we haven't done it where their um, their back legs were relaxed. We just kind of, we took the food and went down, and mm -hmm. they both went down. Yep. You know, we just... Yep, so we're going to build mm -hmm. the relaxed position. Yep. Hips are relaxed, and then give her, and we're going to build duration. So she'll get several pieces while she's in this position. And chicken almost makes her a little too frantic, but that's all right. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Can I drop one? So she's not relaxed, so there she is. Oh, oh, you didn't go down. Okay, so pawing, no, we won't give her any help for, for pawing. And okay. the, the other reason that it's just, hard with, with Jesse, both is that you, then you get that competition. Right. And that, you know, that's the thing that happens to me a lot, though, is I have both of them most of the time. Yep. So it's hard to get both of them to be able to do something because Jessie is good, she's quiet. Abby will overpower her. So if we can get Abby trained, sure. then I can do both of them possibly. Yep. yep. So break those up into small pieces. I'm going to have okay. you work with Abby. I'm going to hold Jessie. Okay. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. We don't have food. So you can do the down from the sit, but pretty quick you can also do it just from mm -hmm. the stand. She doesn't need to be told to lie down first. Okay. And what did what were you saying for down? I wasn't saying anything. You weren't. Yet. Nope. So where do you? But you since you say get down to get off you, your your lay down command should be something like mm -hmm. lay flat or floor. Good. Do you have piece? Nope. Nope. New position. The goal is to give it to her all while she's there. So give her, I want you to be able to give her five pieces without her breaking, without her getting up. Five in a row? Yep. There. And another one. Yep. And then, yep. Good for repositioning. Good. And another one. Poor Jesse. Yep, and another one. Mm. 
Uh, 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 Abby. Yep, and position her sideways. Yes. Okay. Good. Can I do it with Jesse just a little? Yeah. Come here. here, Jess. Good. So she switched, flipped her hips like that. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yep. Got to be quicker. Yep. Because I don't. We we want to get rid of that lay down, get up thing. We right. Wanna, we want them to just lay down and stay there mm -hmm. for a period of time. This is very hard for Abby. So this is what I have to go through usually with. Yep. So you could put I when I train two dogs in the same mm -hmm. house, one is either crated or outside, yeah. and I work with one dog at a time. Mm -hmm. You can't possibly t teach yeah. two at the same right, time. Right. Right. Yep. And that's what I find sometimes it just makes it a little hard. Yep. So have so. do Abby one more time. Okay. App. And App. Just, App. Come here, Jesse. App. No, Jess. Hang on. Let me get Jesse out of the picture. Abby. Abby. Right here. Abby. So be slow. You don't want to be as fast as her. You want to be slow. Yep. And calm. Yep. And another one. Yep. Nope. Just too, too slow. Too much time. Yep. And the, so, and another one. And another one. I think she's going out she's crazy fine. now. Here. She's not going to eat her dinner. Yeah, so. Okay. So what we've usually done is we've usually just said here and then down. And this is that's exactly what we've usually done is right. just played like that. But this is really nice having it relaxed. I've only got one more small piece here. So just give it to her and then just be done. Okay. All right. So the goal So can I say good girl? Or you can say whatever you want, she doesn't okay. understand it. Okay. Right? <laughs> She's not a verbal species. Yeah. The goal will be, um, so since you say get down to meaning get off me, <laughs> I would like your lay down to be flat, floor, or lay. Okay. But down can't mean two different behaviors. Right, right. Okay. And most people cannot change what they automatically say when a dog jumps on them. Well, I, when I have a dog on me, I like to say off. Um, I may have said something different here today, but usually that okay. is what we say. All right, so just pay, like you don't yep. need to say anything. Well, we'll just for this have to behavior. be specific to what we yes. say for what command yes. it is, that's yep. all. Now, there's a lot of different pieces. Over time, you will ask for the down. See, I'm, I'm standing instead of kneeling. She will automatically position herself sideways. And see how my hand is staying right here, and mm -hmm. I'm just, maybe I'm not just. And I'm fee feeding the treats out to her, so the hand isn't going to move yet. She can't, when you take your hand away, she's popping up. Right. I know, honey. Then you're going to go from standing and kind of kneeling with your hand here all the time. She'll get to the point where you can just, you may still have to have a little bit of food come down, but you don't have to go all the way to the floor. You're going to be very conscious about, okay, I did three with my hand going to the floor, now I'm going to do... One with my hand to the top of my shoe, right? But we still have to reposition her, but she doesn't understand that part yet. So we need all those pieces, good girl, to come into play. There you go. Look at that. That's very oh, nice. That's very what good. What a good girl. So from the floor to the top of your shoe to your ankle, your shin, your knee, until you're finally standing up. Okay. Once that relax starts to happen, and that will happen, she will never get a morsel of food in her mouth unless she's relaxed then you'll get it very fast. Mm -hmm. If you if you continue to reinforce this come right. down like that, yeah. then you're basically saying you can still offer me that behavior and I'll pay you for it. And what we want to say is no more. You're not going right. to get paid for that at all, mm -hmm. just for the relaxed position. That's great. And and you should practice it all over the house. Mm -hmm. So it generalizes to you sitting in your chair, you sitting in the dining room, sitting in the living room, wherever you are. Um, she'll like, oh, okay, and the hand signal will start to be this, mm -hmm. or down. Okay. She's, the sit's not bad, it's, it's in context, but for a dog as active and sort of anxious as she is, I'd much rather have the um, down be strong mm -hmm. and have some duration on that. All right, so we also, she needs a come and called, and the way I start that is in the house, using high value treats and hide and seek. So we can do it, I want to do it with them individually, because what happens if you do it with them together is it's hard to tell who really gets the game and who's just following. And you don't want to find that out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
oh, Jesse was just following her. Right. She didn't really understand the game herself. Right. So we'll do it. Um, we'll do it individually. So let's set up so that we've got. Um, well. Yeah, I think we're going to have to move so we can set up for a longer distance. So more in the living room? Yep. Okay. Here she goes. Here she goes. I'm not pulling on the... Oh, 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 oh. come on. You can do it. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun to watch her because I never, I'm never here when she's doing it. Because it's interesting to see how she does it. Oh, almost, almost. <laughs> Is there food in there, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to go with the mouse trap. Yeah. All right, so for common called, <clears throat> we build it up slowly and we start inside. And we start with hide and seek. So even if we do both dogs together today, what I want to be sure that you do is practice them separately when I'm obviously not here. Mm -hmm. And it's a two-person project, so you have to do this with your husband. Mm -hmm. What I want her to learn is to, follow, to find you by your voice, okay. not by having to see you. If she sees you, that's even better. But mm -hmm. because in the woods, and especially around New Hampshire, you're not always just standing in your backyard. I mean, everybody just thinks they stand here and say, Fido, come, one time. And that's really from, it's zipped. Don't worry, she can't get into okay. it. zipped it up. Um, you know, and it comes from obedience showing, and, but that's not the real world. We need to be able to get our dogs to come. And yes, I want you to say their name more than once. So I'm going to give you um, a generous amount of chicken and a couple of liver treats. So these are the fresh baked one. And I'll give you some for both dogs. So you may have to, let's first concentrate. I just don't want there to be any arguments with them. These guys don't fight. Okay. So what I want you to do, particularly with Abby, when she gets to you, is you're going to take her collar with the, with the non-food hand, mm -hmm. and then you're going to treat her with the food hand. So I may not let go of Jesse. Do you want me to this. put one of these guys yeah, down could. somewhere? Okay. Let's put... You want Jesse? <laughs> Look at you. Do you want me I to put Jesse Jessie away? Fun. Yeah, put Jesse. Jesse, come. <laughs> Jesse, come here, honey. Come here. Come on, honey. She sees all the food. Oh, she no. says, I know Abby's going to get all this oh. food <laughs> and I'm not going to get anything. So you don't need to give her all of this. Break this up into maybe groups of three. But one hand should not have food in it so that you can actually grab her collar. Yeah, it, that doesn't, I know, come here. Come here. Okay, so you're going to show her this food, not that she needs to see it. And I want you just to, like, run to that door. Okay. So show it, just, like, let her get a good sniff. Abby, look. Okay, go to the door. Call her just her name. Abby! Grab her collar and give her several pieces. Oop. Good. Okay, just give her a couple pieces. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to, uh, you don't need to show it to me anymore. Go back to towards where I was standing. I'm going to go down the hall a little bit more. So call her with a really happy, excited voice. Abby! Come here, Abby! Come here, Abby! Yeah! yeah. Whoa! Good. <laughs> okay. This is good? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take her back down the hall, and this okay. time I want you to be squatting down over here. Okay. So you're going to just start to hide. Don't look to see where she's going. But. Not so much that it's too hard to find. Her. Okay. Okay, call her. Abby. 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 <laughs> Take her collar. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. All right. So, you don't need to do it more than three times. Okay. She's. And you're going to start hiding by being that subtle. Like, and then next time, you know, you could go behind the magazine thing and squat down a little bit. Or, you know, when we're not here with all this, you can go in the kitchen or around the corner. And the goal is that she, so you may have to say, Abby, Abby, come on. I don't, you don't have to say calm. You don't have to say here. I don't want you to be stern. Mm -hmm. I want you to be really happy. Come on, come on, let's go. And the goal, and you will hear, especially on this floor, you hear the tone. I was like, ch 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 and then she's going to stop if she doesn't know where you are, and she's going to listen for where is it coming from. Abby! Oh, she's over here. Mm -hmm. And then you or your husband will see her charge over there. And so you're going to do her, then you're going to do Jesse, 
then you could do one together. But I would work them separately. Right. And you can start to then go downstairs. So when the first time you go downstairs, just stand at the bottom of the stairs. Don't hide in the downstairs until they realize, oh, now this, now this is part of the game too. Mm -hmm. um, once you can hide and the dog is truly, you know, searching you out and finding, looking for you and listening for you, then you can start it outside in your, out in your fence. To and then after that, what I do is I have a long line. More than 15? More yeah, than 15 this is like yeah. 20 or 30 feet. Okay, yeah. It's a little sometimes cumbersome, mm -hmm. but then one at a time with the two of you outside the fenced in area and you just, you start again, you don't hide right away. You just stand where she can see you, you call her, and then you're gonna escalate the treats to liverwurst for outdoors. I didn't realize that there was a oh, hierarchy. Oh, yes, of <laughs> yeah. And that, that is a good I, idea because with Jessie, actually, this is what we did, only we used a 15 foot lead, and she was really interested in the food. Yep. And she so does, she. right, but this, she, Abby is just a little like, wired yes, you know it's is. like oh, she yeah. doesn't focus like with jesse she was calm and she came and you knew that she was paying attention right but with abby it's just like whoa right, she's just right. everywhere yes yeah and that's why i want you to do the collar grab because right. when you're outside and you call her to you and let's just say she's had a near like you weren't sure you were going to get her back so you're a little adrenalized yourself you're going to grab her like that's the first thing you're going to do is reach down and grab her and you want all of this now so we're working two areas of science we're working operating classical and the classical is about making associations so the association that we're making is when my hand comes out and grabs you food follows mm -hmm. yeah grab my collar right as opposed to don't grab my right. collar which is what right. a lot of dogs do right um, the operant piece is the running to you is what gets reinforced that's the behavior mm -hmm. this is the association this is the behavior don't ask her to sit don't ask her to lie down because now you're reinforcing the sit we want to reinforce, yes, you came here. Right. Okay. Well, I can tell you that we've been, it's, it is hard to work with just one person in doing that. But yeah, my you husband. Need two for that. Right. And so what we've been doing is in an area where we know that there's not a lot of a chance for them to run off, mm -hmm. we've been trying to do that, but we haven't had the food. So I think the food will make a, hu a oh, really huge difference. Oh, tremendous. Yeah. And when I say liverwurst, so I buy cheap liverwurst. And so it's real liverwurst. It's yep. not like the it's doggy a, stuff. Yep. Oh no, no doggy yep. stuff. It's in a tube, mm -hmm. and like for today, I cut it into wheels mm -hmm. because. So I would give her probably half, if not the whole thing. Wow. A half of this wow. or the whole thing. Right, because you're asking her to come away from squirrels, rabbits, chipmunks, right. all the smells. Dogs can smell a grain of salt in an Olympic-sized pool. So to, ha to ask them to leave that right. for some little it measly be, nugget, right. no, not going to do right. it. Right, okay. That, and that I'm not makes me go feel to, so much better. And I'm not going to work for 25 cents an hour. Right. Right? That's 25 cents an hour, you know? I need the big bucks. Right, okay? right. So wow. that's why you're not going to do a lot. You're not going to do 100 recalls. Right. Three outside, she gets a lot of this, then you're done for that time. Mm -hmm. And you're going to build her up so that she's running 30 feet mm -hmm. and she's running 50 feet then 60 feet. Now you're hiding behind a tree and she has to find you. It has, That's to, great. Be, it has to be worth her while mm -hmm. to play the game. Mm -hmm. And coming to you just because you love her, it's not enough. Sorry. It's just not enough. And she's like, <laughs> rabbit. Jody's standing there with nothing in her hand. I'm going for the rabbit. Right. 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 Class, right. she's a Brittany. Yes. So she's hardwired to hunt. Yes. Right? Yep. So we can't necessarily, like, I'm not pretending to say that we're going to prevent her from chasing the rabbit, but it would be nice when she was done and you're still standing there going, Abby, come on, Abby, happy, 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 cheerlead her in that she'll go, oh yeah, the rabbit's gone. I want the liverwurst. And boom, she'll going to come to you. Yeah. But again, the, the common called is valued down here. <laughs> and we need the valuation to come up right. here, right. really. And we're going to do that slowly so that she's always successful. And then, you know, there's other ways that I can do distractions, and I can come back and, and show you that. So mm -hmm. in the house, when she's really good at it, I would hold, I would have her. So this could be you, and I would have a handful of something. Not as, not as good as what you would have, but mm -hmm. maybe the hard dog biscuits. Mm -hmm. 
and I would let her sniff. And she'd be like, oh, oh, let me get that, let me get that. As soon as you call, I let her go. My hand stays here, and she has to come off of this to you. So you have to have something much better than what I have and a lot more than what I have. Oh, hi. Are you sweet? She's really sweet. Yes, you are. Okay. She is. Yes. She is sweet. <laughs> yeah. We love both of our dogs, and we want them to be um, friendly for everybody. But you know, again, oh, like when are. people They're come just into a too friendly. right, people yeah. come in the door, and they nobody wants to have dogs jumping on them. Nobody. No. And, and everybody has dogs that jump on them. Right. Everybody right. Has. And you know, I like I like our ducks because people like our dogs because they're friendly. And mm -hmm. but I don't like it when they do jump. And we've been really lucky. We really have been working, you know, hard. But we just need to keep working. Yeah. And so, you know, that liverwurst is really going to make a difference, I think. And, you know, oh, knowing yeah. that there is a difference between chicken and kibble. Oh, huge, yeah. huge. So indoors, like I said, you can certainly use, you know, for the sits and the downs, I would use lower value because, because you don't have a lot of competition. The, the competition in here for her is your counters and the other dog. Mm -hmm. um, outside, though, the kibble has to go away. Right. And even though she likes apples... Um, no. I wouldn't use that as, as a reinforcement. The apple is just because it's food. It doesn't matter. It could was have been... Was she overweight or underweight? She was overweight. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so I want to just address your walking issues. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're using a prong collar. Mm -hmm. And since... The prong since collar I feel was like mostly... I've known you forever, prong <laughs> collars are designed to make dogs bite. Really? Because so, yeah. they, they're they, not like that, though. But, but what, what we looked at it for was to walk. Because right. when we first got Abby, we couldn't even walk with her on a lead. And we oh, put, yeah, the, we put the prong collar on her, and within seconds, she was able to walk, and we could walk downtown, and everything was great. Right. But because, oh, let me just use some of the yeah. food that you're holding. Yeah. Because it's digging in her neck. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, there is an adversive piece to that. Right. And that's what we have seen is that we just don't, we didn't like that part of it, but we've been trying to figure out what to do instead. So this right. looks like this might be something. And because it, you know, if it didn't work, people wouldn't use them. That's right. going to be just a little too tight. Let me adjust that. So this is a sensation harness. Mm -hmm. It works. Dogs have oppositional reflex, which means you push on them and they push into you which is why walking her on her regular collar didn't work. Not at all. Um, because when she feels that pressure, mm -hmm. her instinct tells her to move into it. Mm -hmm. Here, Abby. I know. So this is a front clip harness. Mm -hmm. And it will apply belly pressure. It, I like to put it on her when she's standing, not sitting, because it kind of makes her... Oh, that's much better, but we're going to use this. So when you walk with her with this, the leash comes off the side of the shoulder that she's on, right? So she's on this side, it's going to come off this shoulder. Mm -hmm. If I were on the other side, hey, Abby, then you're going to, it's going to come off this other side. Now, when we're walking, we, I usually will give her a long ways to, to walk. Maybe I should start off with a short distance first. I would use, yep. Yeah, because what ends up happening is this goes under her leg and then she's running, you know, she's right, walking right. with it under, and it doesn't really feel like it's doing much. Right. Okay. So when you walk with this outside, you're going to pull up and release and up and release. So if, good girl, mm -hmm. you'll see a different yeah. difference outside. Come on. Right. So it's up and release. And when you pull up, it's applying pressure here, which right. tells her, oh, move into that pressure. And... It, now, if she sees a rabbit, yeah, she's going to go and she's going to pull a little bit. It doesn't work on flexies, mm -hmm. like the retractable leads. Right. It's not going to work on that. Yep. And the leash that we use in the kitchen, that's pretty okay. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, the further away she is from you, then you can't really get the, the correct leash movement, which right. is a little, a little this way. Right. Okay. Yep. Good girl. I know. It doesn't... Um, so it helps her just walk right along next to you. Mm -hmm. Let me just according this up and you can try this. Yeah, and you know, we found that with the prong collar, so I'm, sh I'm sure she's going to listen with this too, yeah. but with the prong collar on, it's a snap. She will, she'll walk right with us. Correct. But without the, anything, and, and like you saw before when the dogs were getting excited, all you need to know is that they're going to have that collar on and they are ready to do whatever you want them right. to do. But right. I don't want to have to have them on the collar all the time. 
Right. So, you know, you can certainly continue to use the prong collar. I just want to understand but I like it's, this. it's working because... I like this because it's not digging into her. Correct. Yeah. She's It works because she's working to avoid the pinch that she's getting. And if you see any... Um, the police dogs and all those dogs that they're riling up so that they like charge out and bite the person, they're mm -hmm. almost always on prong collars mm -hmm. because they're agitating. That's mm -hmm. what they're designed to do, like agitate, agitate, wow. send them out and get the thing. Wow. So they work, but they also can, you can create reactive dogs because she's on the prong collar, she sees the dog, maybe she barks, you give her a correction, she stops, mm -hmm. but she, but now she, now in her mind that associative learning is happening, oh, dogs make my neck get bit, so maybe I should, you know, get the dog faster or something. Right. You haven't described that. So no, not it's at all. your choice. Actually, so try these guys, both. Yeah, these yeah. guys are great when other dogs go by. So, so it's, yep. a, it's a lot of... Good. Yeah. So release it. Yep. So there's no pressure unless you need it. Mm -hmm. Good dog, Al. Come on, Abby. See if I can just distract her. Abby, Abby. Good. Pull up. Yep. Good. And then release it. Good. So it's an up and release. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's a lot like any of the other collars, but this one doesn't feel like, like it's going to really hurt them like it could with the <laughs> other. Seriously, you know, that's what the, the thing is that we haven't liked about the prong collar is that it does dig into her mm -hmm. because she doesn't stop pulling. She right. just wants to pull all right. the time. Right. And she may pull a little bit with that, but her, her short hair, her muscularness usually means that the sensation harness will work really well. Yeah, that's great. And the really hairy, bulky dogs, they don't work so well. Right. Right. But that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So any same thing would happen with Jesse too, because Jesse is the same exact. You know, she listens really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, Abby again, she just focused you know, a little bit on other other things. Yes, the training, the impulse control can help her get more sort of settled in her brain. She's like, ah! yeah, she is. She's and I'd love like to that. have her a little calmer. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I do get some of the pheromone. Maybe that yeah. will, you know, I just, I hate to use anything that's not like natural or something that's going to really be yep. strange for the, the dog. The downstay and the, and there's lots of other training we can do, but mm -hmm. the downstay should be your best friend. And that mm -hmm. was, that's where I would put my um, time in with her. Mm -hmm. So that she just, when you ask her to lay down, she's like, yep, I can do that. Yeah. So that she can turn off. Like she's on mm, too much. All the time. And not off enough. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. All right. Any questions about anything? I don't think so. I, I can't wait to practice with her. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I can't wait to see the results. Yeah. Huh. yeah. You're going to be like a new dog. She is. And, you know, these dogs, Brittany's are such wonderful dogs. You know, mm -hmm. I've had one for almost all my adult life um, at some point. I had right. one. My last dog before these two, we had had for over 15 years. Mm -hmm. And we got her from a puppy. I thought that I needed to start with a puppy. And I thought, oh my God, you know, the, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. I was so worried. That's why I didn't really want to get a um, a rescue dog mm -hmm. because I thought well they're going to be too old right but then I thought well you know it might might work I tried it with the first one and it worked because Jesse was a little bit more timid and Abby is totally black and white to what Jesse mm -hmm. is right but they both are, are really great dogs to have around and and I would recommend you know Brittany except for the fact that you have to be able to walk them you have you cannot right, have high a Brittany energy. Right. right it's just like a Dalmatian or, or some of these mm -hmm. other dogs you know people don't think that they need exercise but that's right, they what do. they really do need. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yep. All right, good. Good. Okay, so thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, and I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years.